Hi, I'll be sharing five projects for AZ400, which is the DevOps Engineer Expert exam. Basically, this exam measures an individual's expertise in designing and implementing DevOps strategies using Azure DevOps and Microsoft Azure. So if you remember, I did create a video about passing the AZ400. And if you watched it closely, I did mention that I did not study for the AZ400 exam. The reason I did not study for it is because I have had hands-on experience working with Azure DevOps and Microsoft Azure, specifically in the DevOps role. I've also spent time building DevOps solution for Learn to Cloud website, as you might know. So I felt confident in my skills to pass this exam. That being said, this just shows how much having hands-on practice can help. So I'll be sharing five projects for you that you can build for the AZ400. So the exam evaluates five core skill sets, configuring processes and communication for traceability and workflow, designing and implementing source control strategies, including branching and repository management, building and managing release pipelines with consideration for automation, package management and testing, and developing a security and compliance plan focused on sensitive information management and automate scanning. And the last skill is implementing an instrumentation strategy for monitoring and, and metrics analysis. So each of this skill set ensures that the candidate is proficient in optimizing the entire software development life cycle, also known as SDLC for Azure applications. So that is what the exam kind of measures when it comes to the skill set. And to best learn these skills, hands-on is the way to go. You just can't cram the course material or documentation to learn all of these skills. Also, there is a prerequisite requirement for AZ400, which is either AZ104, the Azure Administrator exam, or AZ204, the Azure Developer exam. And that is why I think if you build something with AZ104 or AZ204, or while preparing for either of those exams, you can implement all of these five projects to your project that you build earlier. Going on to the projects, I do want to mention that the good thing about these five projects is you can implement them on each stage of your already ongoing project. So let's say you're doing the cloud resume challenge, right? And you might have source control where you're storing all the code that is required for the project. You can implement all of these five projects onto that one project. So it could be like a main master project that has all of these implementations. So instead of doing it separately, I would say treat these projects as stages for your DevOps project. So let's start with the first one, the traceable tribe, configure processes and communications. So the skills that will be practiced here are configure activity traceability and flow of work and configure collaboration and communication. In this project, you'll integrate Azure boards, GitHub Actions, and Azure pipelines to manage the flow of work items from creation to completion. So as I said, let's say you, you are building the Cloud Resume Challenge. You can implement this project to track what are the items that are left, right? You can create issues and bugs. And in order to do that, you'll be using Azure boards, GitHub Actions, and Azure pipelines. You'll also implement custom dashboards for actionable insights, document the project with wikis and diagrams, and automate notifications and release documentation. The diagram description is basically um, using Azure boards, GitHub Actions, or Azure pipelines, and kind of show how the integration works when like an issue is opened or a bug is opened, what are some steps that maybe GitHub Action does, and how is the item or ticket being tracked. So you will need programming knowledge, right? And here is the list of Azure services that, are, that will be used in this project. So Azure Boards, Azure Pipelines, GitHub Actions, and Azure Monitor. And then there are about 10 steps for you to implement this project. So the initial setup includes creating a new project in Azure DevOps and initializing a new repository on GitHub. And then you configure Azure Boards uh, and create a backlog for your project. And then you integrate either the GitHub repository or the Azure repos repository. Step four is the workflow automation. So create a GitHub action workflow that triggers on when a pull request is open and then integrate that workflow to update work items in Azure boards. 
Azure Pipeline configuration. So set up a build and release pipeline in Azure Pipelines. Again, you can still use GitHub Actions here, but I would recommend you know getting used to the Azure DevOps tools. So Azure Pipelines is one. And then implement traceability by linking pipeline runs to work items so that it tells you the status of whatever the build was, if it was successful or not successful. Step six is metrics and dashboards. So use Azure boards to create a custom dashboard. Include widgets for cycle time, lead time, and other flow metrics. Documentation and diagrams. So create a wiki in Azure DevOps. Uh, you also have the ability to create a wiki in GitHub too. Use tools like draw.io to create process diagrams and embed them into the wiki. And then you have release documentation. So configure the Azure pipeline to generate release notes and API documentation automatically. Integrate this documentation into your wiki. For notification, you can set up a webhook to inform team members about key events such as work item updates or pipeline failures. And then the last step is review and test. So review the entire setup for traceability and communication, perform a dry run to validate that everything is working as expected. The next one is Branch Master, the ultimate source control hub. So as you can tell by the name, it's about designing and implementing source control. So the skills that will be practiced here are design and implement a source control strategy, plan and implement branching strategies for the source code, configure and manage repositories. So you will come up with a Git workflow on how the branching strategy works for your own project. So you'll be using Azure repos or GitHub for your Git-based source control and then implement advanced strategies for authentication, branching, and data recovery. You'll also use Git hooks for workflow and will integrate Azure pipelines for CI CD. Again, the diagram description so that you can kind of visualize this project is how the branching strategy works. If you're using feature branches and there is a staging and then prod branch, so you will have all those details in your diagram. And how does that integrate with Azure pipelines with the workflow hooks that will be triggering certain events in your pipelines? You'll need the programming knowledge here too. The Azure services that will be used are Azure repos or GitHub for your source code, Azure pipelines for CI CD, and Azure Active Directory for authentication. And then you have about 11 steps on how to implement this, this project. So, so the steps are initial repository setup, create a new Git repository in either Azure repos or GitHub. The authentication strategy should be implementing SSH key-based authentication for the repository. Optionally integrate with Azure Active Directory. Also integrate Git LFS which stands for large file storage to handle larger files. Optimization strategy, so implement Git Scaler to speed up the operations in your repositories. Workflow hooks, implement pre-commit and post-commit hooks to automate workflows, such as code linting or issue linking. Branching strategies, so create a trunk-based development model with separate branches for features and releases. Pull request workflow, so implement branch policies for pull requests to enforce code reviews, build validations, and other checks. Branch protection, implement restrictions on merging to protect important branches like main or release. Azure Pipelines integration, so link your Azure repos or GitHub repo to an Azure pipeline for continuous integration and deployment. Repository management, so configure repository permissions to control access, Use tags to mark important milestones or versions. Learn Git commands to recover lost commits or data. Implement strategies to purge sensitive or unnecessary data from repository history. And then you just test the entire setup that you built. So simulate a workflow that takes a feature from a feature branch through a pull request, triggers the Azure pipeline and merges it into the main branch. The third is Pipeline Palooza a comprehensive CI CD masterclass. So here you will be designing and implementing build and release pipelines. Following are the skills practiced. So designing and implementing pipeline automation, package management, job execution order, parallelism and multi-stage, deployment with various strategies, infrastructure as code, and maintaining pipelines. 
So in this project, you will design and implement a comprehensive CI-CD pipeline using Azure Pipelines or GitHub Actions. The pipeline will integrate with various tools for code quality, package management, and deployments. You will also practice infrastructure as code and implement monitoring and optimization for the pipeline. The diagram will consist of multiple stages representing code building, automated testing, package management, deployment strategies, and monitoring. Each stage will be integrated with different tools and Azure services. Again, you do need programming knowledge. And as you are seeing, Azure services that will be used are increasing as we are going down the list of projects. So you have Azure Pipelines, Azure Repos or GitHub, Azure Artifacts, Azure App Configuration Feature Manager, Azure Resource Manager, Automation State Configuration, Traffic Manager, and App Service. And then you have about 10 steps to implement this project. Again, okay, remember I said in the beginning, you might have a cloud application that you're working towards. I think you can implement all of these five projects to that one main project because these are software development lifecycle strategies that are basically used in the DevOps world. So the steps for these are the initial setup. So create a new Git repository and Azure repos or GitHub. This will be same for all of these projects. Second step is pipeline automation. So integrate code quality tools such as SonarCube, implement automated testing, including unit tests, integration tests, and UI tests. The package management strategy, this is where you'll use Azure artifacts and create feeds for NuGet or NPM. Pipeline design, so use YAML to define pipeline stages, jobs, and steps. Job execution order, so design the pipeline for parallel execution where possible. Create e reusable elements such as task groups and variable groups. Deployment strategies, so implement blue-green deployment and canary deployment use Azure Traffic Manager for load balancing, and implement feature flags using Azure App Configuration Feature Manager. And then for infrastructure as code, implement IAC using BICEP, create a desired state configuration using Azure Automation State Configuration. Pipeline maintenance, so monitor the pipeline health using Azure Monitor or other tools. Implement a retention strategy for pipeline artifacts. And then testing and verification, so run several builds uh, and deployments to verify the entire pipeline workflow. On number four, we have secure it, Azure Vault of Secrets, so developing a security and compliance plan. The skills here that will be practiced are managing sensitive information and automating security and compliance scanning. In this project, you will be focusing on creating a secure and compliant CI-CD pipeline for a sample application You'll manage sensitive information like secret keys and tokens. You'll also integrate automated security and compliance scanning into the pipeline. This project aims to provide a working model on how to implement best practices for securing your pipelines and code in cloud. The diagram will consist of multiple components such as source control, Azure pipelines, Azure Key Vault, GitHub secrets, and various scanning tools like SonarCube, GitHub code scanning, each component will interact securely to prevent leakage of sensitive information. The Azure services that will be used here are Azure Pipelines, the important one is Key Vault, and Azure Monitor. And then you have about 10 steps to implement this project and the strategy behind securing secrets and your code. So for this, after you have again created the repository and the pipeline, you'll be integrating Azure Key Vault to manage secrets and keys. Use GitHub secrets for repository specific sensitive information if you're using GitHub repository. Implement and manage service connection and personal access tokens. For pipeline configuration for sensitive files, design your pipeline to handle sensitive files securely during the build and release phases. Implement strategies to prevent the leakage of sensitive information. You can also automate code scanning, so integrate GitHub code scanning or SonarCube into the pipeline for static code analysis. Automate compliance scanning, so use tools like Menbolt or GitHub dependency scanning to automatically analyze licensing vulnerabilities and versioning of open source components. Monitoring and logging here, you will be using Azure Monitor to keep track of all activities, especially the access and use of secrets. And then do some pipeline testing, so run several builds and releases to ensure all security and compliance checks 
are functioning as expected. And this is an important step, documentation. So document all configurations, scanning results, and manual steps necessary for maintaining security and compliance. The last one is Ionit, Azure Metrics Maestro. Here you'll be implementing a instrumentation strategy. So configuring monitoring for a DevOps environment and analyzing metrics and interpreting logs. In this project, you will set up monitoring and analytics for a DevOps environment using Azure Monitor and Azure Application Insights. You will define key application and infrastructure performance indicators, set up alerts for pipeline events, and analyze metrics using KQL. Your diagram will consist of Azure Pipelines, Azure Monitor, and Azure Application Insights. It should show data flow from the application to Azure Monitor and Azure Application Insights. Azure services that will be used here are Azure Monitor, Azure Application Insights, and Azure Pipelines. And then you have about 10 steps on how to implement this project. So for this one, the initial setup is creating a new repository and also having like a sample web application for this one. Uh, create an Azure pipeline for CI CD for the sample application. Configure monitoring tools. So set up Azure Monitor and Azure Application Insights for the sample application. Integrate these services with Azure Pipelines. For access control, configure who has access to your Azure Monitor and Application Insights. Configure alerts in Azure Monitor for various pipeline events like build failure, deployment failure, etc. Setting up key performance indicators, also known as KPIs. So identify and set up application KPIs in Application Insights. Then also identify and set up infrastructure KPIs in Azure Monitor, example, CPU usage, disk usage. Then analyze these metrics. So inspect application performance using Application Insights and infrastructure performance using Azure Monitor. Business metrics. Set up and monitor metrics that are aligned with the business value like user engagement. KQL. Use basic KQL queries to interrogate logs for deeper insights. And then testing. So use the application to generate metrics and ensure that all the KPIs and alerts are working as expected. And the last step is documentation. So document the monitoring setup, key metrics, and any custom KQL queries that you have created. And as I said, you might be using all of these projects as different stages for your main project. A good example is Learn to Cloud, right? So for Learn to Cloud, we almost have all of these practices or projects part of our software development lifecycle. So for example, the Traceable Tribe you know, we use uh, the LTC backlog in GitHub under projects. So GitHub has this feature called projects and you can have boards here and you can see that that's how we track new features and things to work on, right? Similarly, if I go with the branch master project, we do have, we do have fine grained access to the branches here. So we have main branch that is our production branch and then we have staging and feature branches and you can see that here. So only the maintainers of Learn to Cloud, which is Gwen and me, have the ability to merge anything to our production branch, which is main branch. And everything else is controlled by pull requests from any of the contributors that have worked with us. So that's the implementation of the branch master project. If I go further, we have Pipeline Palooza, a comprehensive CI CD masterclass. We used GitHub Actions to deploy to staging and production environments, as you can see. So the Azure, web, the Azure static web apps is what we use for our web app. And this is the CI CD step that runs for production. Moving along, we have secured it. So using Azure Vault for secrets. Since we use GitHub extensively for Learn to Cloud, we use secrets and variables in GitHub. So this is where all of the secrets reside. Again, you don't wanna expose these in your code. So we have implemented the secured project here. And last but not the least is Ionit, implementing an instrumentation strategy. We used Google Analytics for the user side of metrics, but we use Azure Monitor for the Azure Web App and monitor the infrastructure metrics on how the web app is performing, how many requests do we get. So as I said, you might have one pet project where you can implement all of these five projects as strategies. But yeah. Those were the five AZ400 projects. I hope 
it will help you to get that hands-on practice. And I wish you luck if you're preparing for the AZ400. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.